I hope that everyone is doing well, staying healthy, and uh, we're just so glad to see your faces today. Um, hi to all of those who are joining us online. Uh, we are live streaming this today, so it is online right now, uh, 10.30 a.m. Um, it's just so good to be with you all, whether it be virtually or in person. Um, so good to see your faces. Uh, we want to um, welcome you, of course, and just give you a few updates. Um, some announcements about what is going on here. Um, so our next slide, please. Um, our Christmas program is this coming Sabbath. So December 19th is going to be our Christmas program. We've got some wonderful music. Um, we've got, you know, uh, just a celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. And uh, we're so excited to, to worship together next week. Um, however, in line with that, this Sabbath and next Sabbath are going to be our um, last outdoor worship services for at least the month of January. So, uh, I mean, for at least a month. So we are going to um, pause and, uh, you know, on the 26th, December 26th, we will be online um, and for at least the month of January. Um, and so tune in online, of course, after next week. So next week will be our last week here in person. Uh, that was the recommendation given by the board, and we will uh, continue online. So also, um, as I mentioned, this worship service is online. Uh, Sabbath School is also online. So we're doing um, all of the other programs online, and you can continue to worship with us either through our website um, or on YouTube. So. Uh, we have our Sabbath school lessons. I can't believe we're done with quarter four practically. So um, next quarter, beginning January, of course, uh, next quarter is uh, on the lesson Isaiah uh, for Sabbath school. So we are going to have pickup times December 15th, that's Tuesday, and December 17th, that's Thursday, uh, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. So if you'd like to pick up your quarterly, uh, you can come to the office and do so during those times. Please bring your face mask, and uh, we have hand sanitizer, so uh, we're keeping it safe, but you can come and pick up your um, quarterlies at that time. Prayer requests. We have a long list of prayer requests. So many in our church family need prayer. And there's many of you who need prayer but haven't shared with us um, what your prayer requests are. And that's okay. But we want to pray with you. So if there's anything that we can pray for, um, please let us know. Um, you can uh, send in your prayer requests through the, <clears throat> the newsletter. You can email us. You can call us. Um, we will uh, be glad to pray for you, and uh, we all want to just keep one another in prayer, of course. So if you'd like to look at that prayer request list, it is on our newsletter. <clears throat> offering. Um, this Sabbath's offering is for world budget. At least that's what I've been told. So <laughs> it may not be. No, I think it is. Um, <laughs> it's for world budget. And, uh, and so if you'd like to give a special offering, you can, of course, mark your tithe envelope accordingly. Um, you can also give, of course, through Adventist Giving online bill pay and uh, allocate your funds that way. Loose offerings are always for local church budget. And um, your tithes and offerings can be dropped off in the baskets. Um, underneath those tents. So uh, go ahead and deposit those if you'd like. And, uh, and remember, our offering is for World Budget this Sabbath. Fundraising along the lines with uh, giving. So we, praise God, only need 5,493 left. It's amazing what God has done through your faithful support. And we are just so grateful. And we are you know, we are just truly blessed. We are truly blessed here at this church. And, uh, and we know that God is going to provide those last $5,493. But if you'd like to help God out, <laughs> you can go ahead and mark your tithe envelope um, or, or online giving, um, Adventist giving, and uh, just put the, the facility renovation project fundraiser. All right. Follow Lola family's gift. So this is um, something that I would typically do. You know, normally we would have Sabbath school classes and I'd give goodie bags to all the little kids, but we're not able to do that right now. And so I wanted to do something special for the families. We wanted to do something special for the families. And so we are making gift bags that we will be giving out next Sabbath um, for our 
young families. So um, this will have parent resources that I've gotten from Advent Source. Um, this will have um, activities for the kids and some goodies and treats. Uh, we've even had some of the women's ministry offer to bake some goodies for you. So um, if you'd like to reserve one of those bags, you're a young family, um, please uh, let me know and I would be happy to keep one and, uh, and make one for you. Also, we are um, supporting the Loma Linda Children's Hospital. Um, they are having a Lego drive, I guess you could call it. Um, they're collecting Legos to give to kids. Um, you know, they do such a wonderful um, ministry here in the Coachella Valley at the Indio Clinic. And so they're collecting Legos. You can give those Legos to Joyce. Contact her if you have a donation to give for that um, so that we can bring some Christmas cheer to these kids who are sick um, here in the Coachella Valley. So uh, thank you so much. If you have given some Legos or if you'd like to, um, please contact Joyce. Anything else? We have Paulette. I, now, I never know if I'm saying your last name right, but Jumalan or Humalan? Jum Humalan, Humalan, Paulette Humalan, uh, here with us. She has the voice of an angel, and uh, we are just so blessed that she's going to be here um, praising Jesus with us. And so um, we look forward to that, and we are going to go ahead and bow our heads for prayer before we continue. So let's go ahead and pray. Our loving God, we thank you so much for just this opportunity, Lord. It's a little bit windy, it's a little bit cold, but we are together and it is good, it is well. We thank you for this time, this space that you've created for us to worship together and we pray that it would be a blessing to each and every person who is either watching online or here in person. We pray that you would keep the winds at bay um, and we pray that um, we might all um, just receive a blessing from, from what you have planned, from the message that you've given to Pastor Mario, um, to the music that will be shared. Um, we just pray that it would all be a blessing and that it would all glorify you. You have given us so many good things, Lord, and we just give you so much thanks. But Lord, we also want to lift up all of those who need prayer um, this week, all of those who are struggling, all of those who um, maybe are facing financial hardships or health difficulties. Um, we just lift them all up to you, Lord. You know each and every prayer request that is on our hearts, and so um, we give that to you, and we pray that if there's anything that we can do as a church family for one another, that you might help us know. Lord, we uh, give this service to you, and we pray a special blessing over the offerings that would be given, and we pray that, Lord, your, your mission and uh, your, your work here in the Palm Spring area would continue, and that we might serve one another. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Paulette, thank you so much for being with us. Pastor Danielle and Pastor Mario and Carol and Doris, who are so kind in inviting me here almost every year. And I feel so warm, even though it's windy, warm with affection and um, hospitality that you always show me when I'm here. And honestly, I sing better when I know people love me. <laughs> so I think that's just... Is that true? You preach better when you know people like you, right? <laughs> but um, God has given me this opportunity to share with you um, a concept. Um, the, the greatest bond a person can have with another is to be their parent, right? Um, and I think that God asked Mary to give up a whole life that she had envisioned that she would get married, have a baby the normal way, have a white picket fence and a dog. We don't know, maybe a camel. But he said, no, I have different plans for you. You are going to be the mother of the savior of the world. And as I think as a 16 year old or 19 year old, I would say, um, I am not qualified for this. But God qualifies those who want to serve and he prepares them. And so this is the song that I'd like 
to have in your hearts today. Mary did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water. Mary did you know that your baby boy would save us sons and daughters. Didn't you Amazing. That was so good. <laughs> hey, good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. <laughs> it's cold. I'm going to give you guys a pass on that one. It's cold. Hey, it's so good to have everybody here. We wanna we wanna welcome. We also wanna welcome our online uh, our online family today. Thank you for worshiping with us online. And listen, uh, I've had the privilege. I'm gonna say the privilege of of doing some ministry with Paulette uh, in the Philippines and in in Thailand. And and let me let me tell you, wherever she goes, she's a blessing. So thank you so much for for being here. You are loved. And you clearly have an angel living in your throat, because that was beautiful. Um, hey, we want to, again, we want to welcome everybody today. Oh, I just want to say real quick, it's so great to see Papa Tom back there. Tom, good to see you. Uh, you've been in our thoughts, our prayers, so, and I can definitely see you. Uh, he's wearing a very nice uh, windbreaker. But anyway, hey, church, again, we are in, uh, we are in a season that... Well, it's a fun season. It's a Christmas season. It's a busy season. And, uh, you know, I thought that the song that you sang, you sang uh, Paulette, really kind of fits into really what we're kind of looking at uh, this morning. Today we are finishing up a series that we are calling Follow Me. 
really the reality of what it means to follow Jesus and, and how that um, encompasses so much. But yeah, that, uh, <laughs> Tony just hit the monitor and it came back on. Uh, it's a calling that, that we have. Um, you know, last week, if you were not here, I see uh, Brother Mike in the back. Uh, Mike Becker shared a message with us. It's on our website if you'd like to kind of check it out. But he spoke on uh, John 21, 1 through 14. And uh, if you get a chance to see it, he wore this, uh, his work outfit, and it, he would sparkle when he would move. And it was great seeing that. But uh, I want to pick it up from John 15 on. And so what I want to do, for those of you that, that, that weren't here, I want to just give you just a little bit of a background before we jump into the passage. Uh, John 21, well, of course, recorded by John. John is the youngest of the 12. And in this setting, we have the death, burial, and resurrection has happened. Now, some of the disciples, like was mentioned last week, were kind of questioning the validity of that. Some of the disciples here are hurting. They are discouraged. They're disappointed. And in John 21... We also find really a broken Peter, right? He broke in. And why? Because, well, Jesus predicted that he would deny him three times, and then John goes and does exactly that. He, in fact, it kind of culminates at a bonfire with the junior high girl, and in this moment, oaths were made, and profanity was dispersed, <laughs> He basically said, look, I don't know him. I want, I, I have no idea who these other men are. I'm not one of them. And he pretty much gives the business to this junior high kid. Not Pedro's greatest moment, right? And so Peter runs away, distraught to say the very least. He goes, look, I've denied my Lord. I've denied my Savior. And so what does he do? And I love how Mike said this last week. He went fishing. He goes fishing. He kind of rallies some of the guys. They jump in a boat. They go fishing all night. Catch nothing. All right, they catch nothing. They get to the shore. There's someone on the shore calls out to them, and this voice says, hey, let's, let's try the other side, boys. Let's try the other side. They throw their nets upon the other side, and upon doing that, they catch a haul of fish. And so at this moment, Pete recognizes, hey, there's something about this figure here, he takes off his garments, I'm not going to get into that, jumps into the water, and he swims towards shore. And upon arriving to shore, encounters a living, breathing, flesh-on-bone resurrected Jesus, right? Resurrected Jesus. And Jesus says this, he says, hey, I'm going to cook you some breakfast, right? Now, Mike and I were talking about that. Just the thought of Jesus cooking breakfast. Jesus Church is pro breakfast. Okay, I'm going to just pause right there. That's the most important meal of the day. I'm preaching to someone this morning, okay? He cooked them breakfast. And uh, then the disciples are going to eat. And they are full. And I guess I, I just, I love it. It's such a beautiful portrait of Jesus here in this moment. Well, upon finishing their meal, again, we want to, I want to pick up the story starting again with verse 15. And, and again, we, we, you may know this moment. You recognize this moment. You may know it's the question that now begins to arrive. And the question is simply this. Jesus asked Simon Peter, he says, or Peter, Simon, son of John, do you, do you love me? Peter says, yeah, Lord, you, you know I love you. And then he says, feed my lambs. And you ask him again, Simon, son of John, do, do you love me? And again, Pete goes, Lord, you know I love you. He goes, well, feed my sheep. And then he says the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter says, look, Lord, you know, you know, you know that I, that I, that I love you. I, I, I love you. And of course, that wasn't the point, was it, Peter? Jesus knew that that you loved him. The question is, Peter, do you know that you love Jesus? You know, Peter may have been questioning there had been failures and shortcomings, really, and faults. So Jesus says, look, yeah, you, you, you do love me. And listen, Pete, I love you. It's this incredible moment. It's a beautiful moment. 
And then what happens next is sometimes what we don't talk too much about. What happens next is what I'd like to look at and really conclude our series uh, this morning, this series entitled Follow Me, and talk really about the reality of what it means to follow follow Jesus. And I'm going to be reading from the end of verse 17. If you've got your, uh, have your Bibles with you, please bring them out with me. If not, you can see our kind of our sky Bible over here. And it reads this. It says, Lord, you know everything. This is Pete. You, you, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. And then listen to what Jesus says. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, well, you used to dress yourself. I right? you used to walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, okay, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. Verse 19, this he said to show what kind of death he was to glorify God. And after saying this, he said to him, now listen to the words of Jesus. Follow me. Follow me. Verse 20, Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. Now keep in mind, this is John. Okay, again, John, brother John always refers to himself in third person. You got to love John. Verse 21, when Peter saw him, he said, Lord, 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 what about this man? Okay, what about this man? If, if, if this is how I'm going to die, well, how's John going to die? Right? How's John going to die? And now listen to the words now. Verse 22, if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? What is that to you? You, you follow me. What's that got to do with you? So the saying spread among the brothers that this disciple was not to die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he was not to die. He only said that if I remain until the end, until I come, what is that to you? It's interesting to me that he, again, he repeats this so close together. John repeats it so close together, almost seeming to kind of emphasize it. Verse 24, this is the disciple who bearing witness about these things and who has written these things. And we know that, this, that his testimony is true. Now, now, church, listen to how John ends this gospel. Okay, this is the gospel of John. This, this gospel, I've done more Bible studies on than any other gospel. Listen to how he finishes his gospel, verse 25, and it reads this. It says, now, there are so many other things that Jesus did. Were every one of them to be written, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Follow me. Follow me. Hey, let's, let's pray. God, again, Lord, we thank you for the moments that we now share. Father, we thank you for this incredibly beautiful day here in Palm Springs. Lord, what a blessing it is to be together. And Lord, really to worship you this morning in a setting that is... Lord, it's so special and it's so unique, and we are so incredibly thankful. And Father, we pray that as we get into your word, as we continue in your word, Father, I pray that you be glorified. And Lord, I pray that um, we may be built up and encouraged today. We thank you for the completed work that we have in your son, and we thank you for the, the hope that we live in today. And these things we ask in your son's name, amen. Uh, okay, hey, how many of you... How many of you, just by a show of hands, remember Ruskit's cereal? Just by a show of hands, okay? So, <laughs> Ruskit's cereal. Okay, now, if you're not raising your hand, I'm going to assume that your childhood was much tastier <laughs> than mine, okay? <laughs> much tastier. Dad loved, my dad loved Ruskits, anything with no sugar, all natural, that looked like dead grass, dad was all about. Okay, dad just loved, he loved himself some Ruskits. I think, I think we have a picture of Ruskits. Can we, can I, there you go, good old Loma Linda Foods. I want to show the saints that have never experienced Ruskits. Go ahead, show the next picture. I ate that. <laughs> right? I, I, I love, now listen, Ruskits became some, uh, it became contention in the Perez household. And really the reason why was because of my, uh, 
my good friend that lived down the street, his name was Steve Robertson. You know Steve Robertson? Steve Robert. <laughs> Actually, I shouldn't be using real names. Um, let's, maybe we can edit, not edit that. Well, anyway, Steve Robertson, best friend, lived down the street. Lived down the street. We're going to just kind of pause a little bit real quick and make sure everybody's okay. Yeah, there we go. It is windy today. There you go, Eileen. Arlene. All right. Okay. What I what I've always loved about Arlene is she 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 loves purple. And I love purple and gold. So we were just a yeah, there you go. Match made in heaven. Here we go. So yeah, so we we I I had a buddy of mine that made life a little bit difficult in our house, and the reason why is because, um, yeah, Steve Robertson, he lived down the street from, from us, and I remember one day, we ha- I had a chance to spend the night at his house, and so I, was, I think I was in the third grade, um, spent the night at his house. The next day, the next day, I, I got up the next morning, I got up the next morning um, and went downstairs, and what I remembered is that the Robertsons, they didn't eat ruskets. They didn't eat ruskets. They ate the cereal called Captain Crunch. Okay, <laughs> Captain Crunch. Now, now when I ate Captain Crunch for the very first time, again, now as a third grader, church, it was like, like breathing. <laughs> like, Steve was like, man, listen, if you think this is good, you should, you should try this. And he brought out this box of Frosted Flakes. Steve's now a drug dealer. No, he's not. <laughs> not. He's not. But I, you know, I remember, I remember coming home, telling mom and dad, and saying to, <laughs> saying to mom and dad, <laughs> that's out of my notes, it really isn't about it. Saying to mom and dad about sharing this incredible discovery that I had made, okay? Thinking that they would be amazed. That, and I, I remember saying, Dad, Dad, can we, can we, can we, can we get it? Can we, can we, can we get some Captain Captain Crunch, and you know, my dad had really the nicest way of saying no. Like my dad would say stuff like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll prayerfully consider it. You know, that's that. <laughs> that was dad. Now, mom on the other hand was a lot more direct. Mom was like, listen, when you get your own home, you can have all the Captain Crunch you want. You know, mom was a little, <laughs> a little bit more, more direct. Well. Again, the reason why there was, uh, there was some contention here is uh, years would pass, and I, would, uh, I, would, I think I was a sophomore in college. I came home from school on a break, and I, I came home, and I remember I came downstairs, and I saw my little brother eating cereal. And I looked at my little brother, and I looked at him, and he was actually enjoying his cereal. And I said, I said hey, Mikey, are you, you like Ruskets? Like you? And he looked at me, and he was like, no. He said, no, 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 mom and dad, they buy me Cinnamon Toast Crunch. <laughs> and he looked at me and he smiled, all right? He just, again, he knew all about the whole Ruskit issue. <laughs> like, this was very, very, very common in our house. And he goes, hey, in fact, if you look in the cupboard, and I still remember this, he said, we, we even have some cookie crisp, right? Now, I almost lost my college mind. Right, Mike. I I was not, and I remember, uh, I remember. <laughs> this is a, this is embarrassing. I, I told my parents. I say, hey, hey, hey. This is this. Look, he gets cinnamon toast crunch, and I I get shredded wheat. Right? He gets cookie crisp, and I got ruskets. And I remember I said to my parents, what I think suburban kids say everywhere. Right, and again, this is very embarrassing. I said, look, Dad, you you may know where I'm going. This, Dad, it's not fair. It's not fair. <laughs> I remember that this week because I think that Peter is having a very similar emotion. 
as I did in the kitchen, holding that cinnamon toast crunch, I think Peter was thinking to himself, it's, it's not fair. It's not fair. Jesus says to Peter, do you love me? Yes. Do you love me? Yes. Do you love me? Lord, you know I love you. Then Jesus says to Peter, okay, well, let me tell you how you're going to die. <laughs> let me tell you how you're going to die. It's not going to be good. It's not going to be pretty. Pete, like when you were young, life was fun, but you're going to grow old and you're going to die. All right. And Peter's like, what? Like, what, what, what? And so what does Peter do? Well, he finds another human being and he says, okay, well, 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 hold on, Lord. Now, if, if that's what's going to happen to me, well, what about that guy, right? Like, if I get ruskets, what, what is he getting? <laughs> you know, I, I love this because I think we can be funny creatures sometimes. If You may think, well, look, if, if I'm not blessed... Well, I'm not sure if I want to see that person get blessed. Or if they get blessed and I don't get blessed, hey, Lord, Lord, hey, we, we have some discrepancy here. It's not fair. And he says, hey, what about that guy? Like, hey, what about, what about John? How's John going to die? Now, again, you would think that, again, kind, loving, sweet, tender Jesus would say, you know, Peter, you are so right. I'm so sorry. I was a little harsh there to tell you that you're going to go down and you're going to go down hard. <laughs> but, you know, John, well, you know, he may not have the same kind of death as you, but, you know, Peter, I suppose, hey, look, we're all going to die and it's going to be okay. You're going to be okay. And No, like Jesus does not help out Peter at all. He, he goes, look, if I want him to live forever, like what's the exact opposite of martyrdom, <laughs> right? Like, like you're going to die. Well, what about him? Well, he may never die. <laughs> and Peter's like, what? And then Jesus says, and what does that have to do with you? You know, I, I thought about that this week, and I, I'd like to answer that. I think I know what it has to do with Peter. Well, Peter is a guy, and so is John, and I think that's not fair. What does it have to do with you? Well, Peter, John's my friend, and if he doesn't die like I die, well, that just stinks, and, and that's not fair, and I think that, has, that is what it has to do with me, Lord. And yet Jesus seems to be so direct in this moment. He, he, it's so adamant. And that's not always the case with Jesus. Jesus is usually not this direct, but he is right now. He says, what if I have him live forever? As if to say, what if he gets to live happily ever after? What does that have to do with you? And then he says it again, Peter, you, you follow me. You follow me. From, from this exchange church, I, I want to make just a few observations that can reveal some truths about following Jesus. We're all here today, and I know we want to follow Jesus. We have decided to follow Jesus, yet there are some realities about follow, following Jesus. And, and, I, and I want to start by saying this. If, you know, if we're here today looking for a life of fairness, you know, this may not be your message. Frankly, planet Earth may not be your planet of choice because the facts are what? Well, life is oftentimes not fair. And sometimes that's more apparent than others. And it's almost as if we have one of those moments here, don't we? Where Jesus doesn't try to fix the obvious unfairness. He only seems to want to amplify it. And of course, we, we know that he wasn't saying that John was going to live forever. John was going to die, but he was saying to Peter, what does his death have to do with your death? You, you, individually, you, Peter, you got to follow me. And so the first observation that I, I want to make here is that when we're following Jesus, we're, 
Church, we're all following the same person, right? But we're all not following the same path. We all have different paths. And what I, what I mean by that is, you know, we're here today. We are united. We are all following the same scripture. We are all following the same word. Uh, John 1.14 14 re- reads, the, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory of God. Like, we are all following the same truth, but we all don't have the same path. And you know when following Jesus, I believe, can get difficult and complicated is when we start to kind of focus on our own path or we start focusing on the paths of other people and not focus on the person that we're following. You know, have you ever met someone who, who, who had a path who, who just seems so much wider, right, or so much brighter or so much better or even cooler, if you will, than our own? Where their path seems, it's paved with asphalt, like so obvious where to go. And then when we kind of look at our path, it's kind of here and it's kind of over there. We're following the same person, but we all have different paths. You know, have you ever heard someone say it's actually kind of funny? And I guess when I say funny, I don't mean funny, I mean wrong. Have you ever heard someone say, hey, have you heard about Amanda? No, what about Amanda? You haven't heard. Well, Amanda, she enjoys music. And she's in this band. It's a Christian band. And while she's wanting to now go do concerts at clubs. Clubs? Only Neil Adams likes clubs. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) I don't know where that came from. Please, Neil does not like clubs. Well, she needs to stay right here. She can't do that. She needs to stay right, right here. Be careful now. You know, our path doesn't necessarily mean that that's someone else's path. You know, God might be speaking to Amanda. God might be telling Amanda, look, I want you to live this adventurous life of following me. And as a young lady, I want you to be a beacon of light in a dark world. You know, we're all following the same person, but we all don't have the same paths, and that could be challenging. That could be difficult. And friends, what we need to do, we need to embrace the path that God has us on. And I think one of the the beautiful things about community that we have today, that we have here, is that when we are following Jesus, it's for each of us to have the ability to celebrate everyone's unique path that each of us are on, to go, well, you know, I think it's so cool that you do that. I think it's so cool that you have a passion for that ministry or I think it's so cool that God is leading you in that direction and that you give maybe to this, your time and your resources to this organization. I think that's amazing. I think that's incredible that you, you do that. I think the fear sometimes, as I've seen as Christians, we can get so siloed. We can get this tunnel vision, don't we, where all roads lead to our ministry. All roads lead to our program. All roads lead, can I say it, to our church, where I really believe that we are part of this tapestry that makes up the church of Jesus Christ around the world. And can I tell you, there are so many dark places in this world that need the love of Jesus, that need the light of of Jesus. And so what our Lord and Savior does is that he sends people with different gifts. He sends people with different talents. He sends people with different paths. We focus on the person. We focus on the person, not the path. And isn't that the point that Jesus is making here? He's saying, whoa, 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 Pete, you, you, listen to, listen to his words. You follow me. You're following me, Pete. You're not following a path. You're not following the promise of a perfect path or you're not following the promise of a path that will look like his or will look like hers. No, 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 you are following me. And I really believe that that is the safest place, the most rewarding place, the most fulfilling place for your heart and for your soul when we are following the path that God has custom designed for you. 
You know, I remember one of the great things about youth ministry um, is seeing our young, our young people embark on different chapters of their lives, you know, graduations, and, and you have these seasons of life, and I, I, I just, I loved it. I see I loved it, but it was hard. Like, it was hard when, when it would happen, when you would see a young person graduate and move on and go to a different place. And I know Pastor Danielle knows that. There may be a youth here, and I'll, I'll, I'll say it. When, when you graduate or if you transition out, it's hard for Pastor Danielle. Like, it was hard for me when, when, she, when she transitioned out. And I remember, I think, in, it, that it wasn't my job to... Make sure that all of my youth's paths remained in one place, right? Like, you, and, like to stand up and go, now you all come back, you hear? You all, you just, you know, you, you, come, you come back. And I remember to, I put in my notes to see them embark on their paths and on their journey with Jesus. It's exciting. It's, but it was, you know, I find myself, I remember I would always say to them, um, remember one thing. You know, wherever you go, whatever you do, you know, stay planted in the house of the Lord. You know, stay planted in that. Stay part of, of community. Be part of a Jesus family. Because when, when you're part of a family like this, you, 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 you grow. You, you flourish. You begin to bear fruit. And, and, I, and I remember I was starting to kind of see how the Holy Spirit would work. Because, you know, following Jesus, church... It can be unpredictable, and it can be adventurous, and God might ask you to go somewhere else. And if he does, I learned that I need to be the first person that, that says, hey, go, follow Jesus, follow, follow God, be true to the path that he has put you on. And this last week, on, I, I had a chance to spend some time with Rolene and with, um, with Don, and uh, they just left on Thursday. I'm over there. We were over there having Chipotle together, and I, I remember. I don't. I was, I was like, well, so you guys are going? I, I don't want you to go. I don't want to see you. I want you. I want to start unpacking these boxes. I don't want you to be packing them. And I said, well, you know, we, not only have we prayed about it, but we've seen God's hand open doors in this whole process. They were being true to the path that God has called them to go. You know, this last week, we said goodbye to John and Damon. We've, you know, we, we need to celebrate the paths that God is calling our members, our members on. We're following the same person, that's for sure. We're following the same person. We are here unified. We're unified around Jesus. But church, we all have different paths. I'm going to say one more thing. I, 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 I'll be honest, I wasn't going to put this in the sermon, but I, but I, but I want to, and I want to say this. We, we also need to be careful when we make presumptions about other people's paths. You know, have you maybe ever met a Christian who's convinced that that person is clearly not following Jesus because their path looks so much different than their own? Have you ever met a Christian who, who was like that? You know, sometimes I believe that's a small perspective. A big person with a big perspective understands that God is big. Understanding that, that our path might be very different from theirs. Obviously, by abiding in Scripture, and the more is outlined by God as we follow Jesus, but oftentimes our paths will look radically different. And you know what I, what I love about different people's paths is that as they follow Jesus, what I begin to see is that it could begin to challenge my own. And it helps me grow, and it helps me I think become a bigger person. You know, I've had people say, hey, well, what do you think about that church? They're a little bit left. What do you think about that church? They're, they're a little bit right. Right? What do you think about this pastor? That They're following Jesus. I got to trust that they are following Jesus. They are being true to what God has told them to do. Well, what about that guy? Or what about that business? Or about this family? Or about this house? If it's my will for them to do this, that, or another, what does that have to do with you? You follow me. We're following the same person, but we all have different paths. Another observation I want to make about following Jesus is this, is that we are, 
Yet we are following a person, I put in my notes, with a strong will. And I, and I say it like that because it, it makes it more real to me. Have you ever spent time with a strong-willed person? Huh? Have you ever married a strong-willed person? I love strong-willed people. I was raised by one. My mother, my father, they are strong-willed. I married a strong, beautiful woman. I love strong-willed people. But strong-willed people are famous for this. They're famous for wanting their own way, (laughs) right? They want their own way. And can can I remind you that Jesus wants his own way too? And here's what's amazing about this strong willed person, about our Lord, our Savior, is that his will, church, is perfect. His will is flawless. His will has never desired any wrong or ill will toward you, toward me, or to anyone. Yet he is strong willed. Remember, a buddy of mine in ministry gave an illustration that kind of that stuck with me. Um, he would say, Hey, we all have plans for life, for our life. And so what we do, he would say, is we would tell God, 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 I cannot wait to show you my plans. I want to show you my plans. And, and he would start kind of acting like he was writing them up. He'd start writing them up. I, I'm writing them up. And, and he would say, God, God, hey, stand by, God. I want to show you my plans. You're going to love this. It's going to be great, God. Look, this is what I'm going to do in my 20s and in my 30s. And in my 40s, I'm going to retire right here, Lord. Check this out. Are you ready to see it, God? I'm going to show it to you. Big reveal. And he would pull out this piece of paper and kind of act like he was showing it to God. And he would say, here it is, here it is, Lord. What do you think? Are you amazed by my plans? And he would do this thing where, you know, he would say, oh, no, you're not amazed? Well, what part do you not like? Like, what decade do I need to kind of modify just a little bit? Oh, no, to all of it. But to all of it? But, but God, these are my plans. You know, last week, um, Eugene, we were mentioned, we, we were, he was laughing about what I'd said about unanswered prayers. Man, praise God, right, for unanswered prayers, you know? Lord, I got to marry him. I, Lord, he's the one, Lord, you know? And then uh, about a year or two later, we're like, Lord, thank you for <laughs> letting me. I mean, right, right? Like, we make our plans. Yet God has a way of changing them. And maybe, maybe you know that scripture. And it's a scripture that I'll tell you, preachers love to use. We love, I mean, we love to use it, and we quote it so eloquently. But I don't think we really understand the blow that it delivers. You remember the scripture found in Psalm or Proverbs 16.9, where it says, Man plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Now, we read that and we go, oh, that is so beautiful. I love that verse. That verse is going to be my verse for 2021, right there. That's going to be my verse. Be careful now. Be careful what we wish for. Man plans his way, but God butts in. But no, 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 God, I've made my plans, but the Lord directs his steps. I'll tell you what has been so amazing in my life has been, uh, you know, I so often get focused in plans, and God is focused on steps. He's focused on steps. Pick up your cross daily. Connect with me daily. Abide in me daily. Follow me daily. Steps. The steps of a righteous man are not ordered by man but are ordered by God. And I'll tell you, church, those are the surest steps that we'll ever take in our lives. Man plans his ways. You know, listen, I'll tell you, I do applaud plans. I think plans are great. As one of the pastors of your church here, I, I, I think that, that plans are, are, are wonderful. And again, as someone who cares for you, loves you, I'd say, hey, let's make plans. Let's plan for 2021 to be the biggest and the brightest and the best. But let us just remember that God can override it all. He can override it all. And when he does, or if he does, we just lean in and say, God, okay, whatever you want, I trust you. I'm following you. And, and listen to how John ends this gospel. And we're done. We're done right here. Listen to how he, he ends this gospel. And John says this. And, and, and frankly, after a, diff, 
difficult portion of Scripture, right? Like what we just read was a little bit difficult. But here's how John ends it. Verse 25, he says, Now there are also many other things that Jesus did. He continues, In fact, there, are, there were so many, if every one of them were to be written, I suppose. Now listen to his language now. Listen to the magnitude in which he, in which he talks in the way he writes. He says, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Like, what did you say, John? Yeah, in those 33 years, everything that Jesus did, if it were written in a a book, the world couldn't contain it. Like, what are you you claiming about about Jesus? Are, Are you really claiming that he is this wonderful? Are you claiming that he is this beautiful? Are you claiming that he is this extraordinary? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm claiming. You see, I believe John here is inviting us. He's like, look, are you, do you want in on this? Do you, do, you, do you want to follow this man who did so much in just 33 years that of everything that was done, the, the, the books, could, they, couldn't, they couldn't contain it. Do, do you want to follow the epitome of wonderful? Do you want to follow the definition of beauty and of majesty and of glory? Or do you want to trade it in for your own plans? Do you want to trade it in for your own safety and your own supposed security? Or do you want to lean in? You know, again, I, I, I'm learning in, in this life. If, if I focus on the where and the when and the why, life can be puzzling. But if I can shift my focus from the when and the where and the why, and if I can shift it to the who, the who, the who gives me peace. The who gives me that confidence. The who gives me that that, that perspective. In the midst of this church, an ambiguous and mysterious and challenging season that we find ourselves in. I feel like sometimes we're flying by the seat of our pants and try to figure everything out and try to, you know, worrying about safety and and, 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 and wanting and desiring relationship. It's just, it's been difficult. It, when I focus on the who, it just has a way of bringing everything into its proper place. You know, I, I don't know where, you know, how this is going to end up. And, you know, people have, uh, have different opinions on where we're going. I don't know the when or the where or the why. But I'll tell you what, I know the who. And the who makes the difference. The who is what I I really believe John is inviting us to follow. To not get caught up in these temporal things. To not get discouraged or dismayed. To not focus on other things. He says, "What, what does that other stuff have to do with you? You, you, you. Follow me. Follow me. What a blessing and opportunity that we have to follow to follow him. And, you know, as, uh, as Paulette comes up, they're going to they're gonna do one more song at the end. I'll tell you, you know, this season is a season where we're following a, a God who came to this world, who lived that perfect life, right? And because of his death, burial, and resurrection today, we have that hope. We have that hope. This is truly a great season. And uh, I just pray that wherever you are today, uh, online, here, I, Lord, I, I just pray that you feel encouraged and built up today. We're going to get through this. You know, we're, we're going to get through this. Hey, let's bow our heads for prayer, and then the girls are going to come up and do, a, and do a song. God, Father, we thank you so very much for this, Lord, this time to be together. Father, we thank you that we have this, uh, Lord, this opportunity, Lord, to follow the epitome of beautiful. We thank you for who you are and what you are in our hearts and in our lives. And Father, I just pray that we can keep our focus on you in the midst of everything that's going on today. We thank you that uh, through your son, we, we have that completed work, that we have that hope that only he could deliver. And this season, we remember not just his coming, But Father, we also remember the victory that we have, the the, the true celebration that we have in your son, Jesus Christ. And for that, we are so incredibly thankful. 
We pray that blessing upon all those that are here. And again, we thank you, thank you, thank you for this time to worship together. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. This season, we had to let go of so much. Tradition, Thanksgiving was very odd for me. I'm used to having 60 people in our home. There's so much pain and letting go. One of the things I had to let go this season was singing at the Disney Candlelight. Every Christmas I do it so I can get a free ticket back in. And it is one of the last public places where they actually sing about Christ. It has only been canceled twice and only because of torrential rain. And now, because of COVID, would be the third time. It is hard to follow a conductor when you're in a choir. It takes skill and determination and good eyesight and coordination. Did I say that already? Coordination. And my high school teacher taught me the first time, for the first time, how to sing in German this particular song. And two days ago, we lost him. He died. One of my first and dearest musical mentors is gone. And to honor him and the tradition that he had set for every year, I'd like to sing the second verse in German. And I'd like to invite you as well to hum or to sing very quietly in your masks the second verse in whatever language you grow up with, because I know that it is in your heart somewhere deep down inside. Life isn't fair, but we will keep going on and on and focus on the reason of for the season which is Christ, and why he came down here on earth. in your hearts to sing with me silent night in whatever language you have in your heart
Oh, we made it. A uh, little wind didn't uh, interrupt us too much, and I want to thank all of our brothers and sisters who decided to come out here. I know it's chilly. I know it's a little windy, but uh, you braved the elements, and I am extremely happy that you are here. It is a beautiful day. If you look off to your right, you can see how the clouds are just covering over the top of the mountain on the top of uh, Mount San Jacinto right there. Uh, and it truly is a windy day, but we are blessed that uh, we can still worship here and worship together. What a great fellowship it is to be with one another um, in this environment. This environment will continue again next week for our very special uh, extended program for Christmas. We're going to have more special music, so please plan on attending that. After that, we're going to uh, take a little pause and make sure that uh, we do some um, virtual programming uh, so look for that, and though th it'll be available at the standard time. All of the services will be at 1030 on Sabbath, so you can start to look for that. And we'll try to include more services as uh, each week progresses, depending on our capabilities. So thank you so much for everybody who is here. I hope that you guys have a wonderful and blessed week. And if you could just pray with me really quick, we'll dismiss. Our Father in heaven, what a joy it is to celebrate and to worship you. We are so, so blessed here in Palm Springs. Help us in everything that we do that we can share your message of peace, love, and hope so that more people will feel that as they desperately need that, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.